Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I really hope everybody's doing well and thank you so much for joining me with this continual conversation. This is part two of my review of Sarah the Misfit's testimony um, of being a, a um, an ex-witch and pagan, okay? This is part two. We want to complete this series because I really believe that she has an extremely powerful testimony um, that needs to be shared um, with as many people as possible. Um, she's not the only one with this testimony, but when I heard her testimony and I listened to it, it really, really inspired me um, to want to share this and to really dive deep into her experience and to couple that experience with the word of God, because there's so many people that are clamoring for peace and clamoring for truth and clamoring for power, you know, uh, because they feel helpless in this world. And, you know, Satanism is a master manipulator and he tries to deceive as many people as possible, you know, and especially for those that don't know of God, um, they don't have a household that that teaches about God, uh, teaches about Christ, that knows um, his word. And so very easily, you know, receptive to his devices and suggestions and manipulations and enticements. And so we, especially on this channel, which is Spreading Truth Ministry, we do have the truth, you know, according to John 17, 17, he said, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So we want to use the word of God to be sanctified. Amen. Amen. To know the truth, because I believe that true will, that truth will really make you free. Amen. And so I'm grateful for her. Um, I did follow her on Instagram and um, saw a post that she made relatively recently. And um, we should just continue to encourage one another while it's day. You know, it's it's the transition um, from fully accepting Christ to just it's an ongoing transition. It's an ongoing um, process. People need to understand that it, it is indeed a process, a process of, of trust and hope. Um, and when you have your other underlying issues, you know, such as your parental story and, and, you know, just being mishandled and, and mistreated and you have trauma and you have all those other underlying issues, underlying things, um, it just makes it even that much more difficult to transition into fully trusting the father because there's always question marks, you know what I mean? And the enemy tries to emphasize those question marks you know why this why this happened to me that why that happened to me why this happened to me you know that's those are always the types of you know i think they're accusations you know formed in, and formed in, in questions you know question forms uh accusations made in, in in the question forms um and so but the enemy would have us to do that as if to say that somehow it's god's fault instead of really blaming the the true culprit which will be the enemy you know he's the one that wants to kill steal and destroy and god said that he came that we might have life and have it more abundantly so the true thief of joy is is the enemy but he wants to try to put it on god you know because that's what he does he's a manipulator and so we need to understand that though and then when we understand this word and we understand that he's a, a master manipulator we won't be deceived anymore. You know what I mean? We'll know exactly who's responsible for these things. Yes, the Lord may have allowed it to happen, but God did not introduce sin to mankind. Mankind did that. And we're suffering the consequences of that. So unfortunately, because of sin and its nature, and because of the, we've entertained the enemy and we invited him in. And so he has legal rights to us for those that allowed him to have access um, to their lives, he's going to play games. He's going to do everything he can to try to destroy you. And so ultimately it's not God, it's the enemy. But, but here's the grace of God. You know, God will intervene. There is divine intervention that happens in each and, each and every one of our lives. And so praise the Lord, you know, he, in the midst of the spite of that, in the midst of that, God will step in and be that saving grace. God will give us hope and peace. You know, God will, literally spare our lives. God will stop and block, you know, even in the midst of that stuff, we have divine intervention going on, you know, just the mere fact that we can come to know Jesus in the free partner, in the free pardon of our sin, rather than die in our sin, you know what I'm saying? And get up in the judgment and then be judged according to our sins and have to pay the consequences for our sin. We can now have faith in Jesus and the fact that he satisfied, you know, the price 
um, for our sins and that he paid the price and he gave his life for us instead of us in our place so that we don't have to suffer in that way, that we can reign with him, but we have to suffer here on this earth, amen, in order to reign with him. There's, there has to be an even exchange. Like we have to give our life to him. You know what I mean? Like our whole life, we have to give to him because he gave his whole life. And that's what relationships are all about. I can go on and on, on because I love him so much, but I really do love the testimony. I really do feel like that, especially in current day, current day, 2024, I feel like many people will be able to relate. I feel like a lot of the videos that I've seen were older videos, different language, same topic, but presented differently. I feel like her testimony is for the modern day and age where people are right now, what they're practicing right now. And maybe some of the questions that you may have had regarding witchcraft and new age and paganism. I feel like that she has a lot of answers in her testimony. All right. So um, let's just not continue on. Let's just make space for her to share. Again, it's fair use. This is for educational purposes. And I'll be sure to leave a link in the comment section so that you can watch it without interruptions at your leisure. So we're going to continue where we left off. Okay. We're going to continue where we left off and she's going into her father's side. Now the father's side of the bloodline concerning um, the African culture. All right. The African culture, the, her family was, her father's side of the family was exposed to when it comes to um, sorcery, witchcraft and things of that nature. And just the African worship and um, uh, the, the ancestral worship and things of that nature. She's going to dive deeper into that. All right. So if you're ready, I am, let's, let's go things that were protecting me and that loved me in a way that I haven't, hadn't felt that in Christianity. Okay. Just to clarify, yeah. I'm just thinking about the, your uncle that you were talking about. So when he speaks about African spirituality, is it attached to God? Is it that they're like, we're serving God, but in our own way? Registering on. Sorry about that, y'all. Let's get through. He thinks that the um, well, the way it was explained to me, and forgive me, Uncle, if you watch this, I'm ruining what you used to say. But there was this idea that the concept of God that we have is a white man's version of God. Mm -hmm. But for us, um, we had multiple, like specifically, I want to talk about ancient Egyptian type of understanding of God because they had multiple gods. Yeah. Right. Uh, although they also believe that their multiple gods also just an expression of one, some something weird like that. I believe there was like 12 essences or something. And that's where you get like Thor, um, Isis, all those other deities. And he used to explain that this is this is what makes sense to us and touching on the Yoruba side of... Uh... Okay, so let's pause for just a few moments. You said a lot there in terms of the African um, ancestral cultural, religious side um, that she mentioned on her father's side. She mentioned something about, which is unfortunate, but many have said this, many people that are on that side of the spectrum that choose to worship God in that way, say that the faith that we've been introduced to here in America is the white man's religion, is the white man's religion. Now, here's the thing. If, if they're coming from a biblical perspective, it is not a European's perspective. That's not accurate at all because it's, it's not a European perspective because the Bible is based in the, in the Middle East, in, in Africa. We know that everything started there. So the Europeans are in Europe, <laughs> Africa, Africa right so the bible and and all the 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 geographical um historical sites um references from generation to generation it literally gives you a road map to every region and parts of africa that they were in even jesus being born in bethlehem right um being raised in naz being from nazareth um you know in around Jerusalem, going up to Jerusalem to worship. So it just, again, pinpoints where Jesus came from. And then when you, you know, you go back and you go where Abraham was and, and again, all of the patriarchs, where they were 
it tells you uh, geographically where they were, it even gives you some insight where Adam and Eve were in terms of the Garden of Eden. It tells you the rivers and it gives you a lot of geographical information to help to pinpoint historically how the story was told historically, biblically and historically how the story was told. So that is incorrect. We have to debunk that, that it is not the white man's religion. It is not. Um, it, it came from African people. All right. And so therefore now that's not to say that, you know, the white people that were um, colonizers try to feed the slaves segments and portions and pieces of that to try to make sure that they comply, right? And submit, they, they literally omitted texts in the scriptures so that they wouldn't really know who they were. And that's part of the reason why the freedmen or the former slaves weren't allowed to keep their names because they did not want them to know where they came from. They did not want them to know their ancestry. That's why they were forced to give up their names and their language. And they were forced to take on the name, the master's name, and basically were beaten into submission. Okay, so unfortunately religion has been used as a weapon you know for the con for the colonizing of countries they've used the white man had let's be honest has used faith religion as a weapon as a tool as a manipulative tool unfortunately for their gain that's not our fault that's their fault but just saying that to say Having faith in Jesus is not a white man's concept at all because Jesus wasn't even white as we know white to be. You know what I mean? He wasn't Caucasian. He wasn't from Europe. He was from Africa. All right. So we just have to, we just want to clarify that because you hear that a lot. And um, unfortunately, you know, that comes from a level of lack of knowledge. You know what I'm saying? So, okay, well, we're not going to do that, but we're going to go on the opposite end of the spectrum and we're going to do something totally different that feels right to us now let's go to the whole egyptian concept that she spoke about if you were to do a study on the religions of egypt the egyptians had over 600 gods so clearly they were polytheistic which means that they worshiped many gods the god of the bible the faith-based structure that we adhere to we adhere to there being one god all right one god one hear o israel for the lord our god is one god okay the egyptians they worshiped many different gods all right many there was over 600 in total probably more all right gods that they worshiped and remember when god had executed judgment upon the land of egypt upon the pharaoh and the egyptians he executed judgment on through the plagues on those gods and what they represented by the plagues. All right. There were 10 plagues. So he said that he would execute judgment on the gods of Egypt through those 10 plagues. All right. So God wasn't playing. So that's not something that the Lord is okay with. It is literally the polar opposite of what the Lord would, would want us to do, have us to do. In the commandments, it says that thou shalt have no other gods before me, no gods beside him, in front of him. You know what I mean? In 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 sequence, no gods before him. Period. Okay, we're not to have that. That is a total violation to his word, and God is totally offended by that. All right, and he is not okay with that at all. Not okay. And if we really understood the scriptures and we read about the things that happened to the Israelites when they violated that commandment, the consequences of that was death. The consequences was that of them losing out on the, on the promises of God. The consequences of that were literally whole families were wiped out. 
because of idols being hidden and taken. Okay, so God, God is serious when it comes to that stuff. So unfortunately, the family member didn't fully understand. So he, like many others that don't fully understand, we lean to our own understanding. And the Bible tells us not to lean to our own understanding, but in all of our ways, acknowledge him. Acknowledge who? Yahweh. Acknowledge the Lord. And then he'll direct our path. So when we don't understand, well, I don't understand you know, white man's trying to force this down our throat because they they want you to, to comply. Servants obey your masters. Oh, that's in the scriptures. But masters had to obey somebody too. See, they, 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 they took that part out. And then masters can't should not mistreat the servants. They took that part out of the conversation, but that was in there too. You know, just like with children. You know, you to obey your parents in the Lord, right? For this is right. And then he also says, parents, you know, um, don't provoke your children to wrath. So God deals with both sides. He just doesn't say, okay, servants, obey your masters and everything. You listen to everything they tell you to do. And I'm expected for you to obey. If you don't obey, you don't love me. No, he's expected for you to obey, but he's also expecting the masters to treat you right. It goes both ways, you know, but unfortunately, Again, misinformation, right? That's how it all starts. My people perish because of what? A lack of knowledge. I don't know. I'm assuming this is what it is. I can't I can't relate to that. So I want to do something that that's more relatable to me, something that I can um, you know, that feels more natural to me. So I'm going to do that. That's a part of your wicked nature to gravitate towards that. If you're do if you're trying to gravitate towards something that is more natural, more within your nature, that's trouble, friends. That is trouble. All right. Because the truth of the matter is, is when you look up the works of the flesh, what is listed is sorcery or witchcraft. It's a works of the flesh. So, yes, you're going to be more naturally inclined and want to do that because it's literally works of the flesh. It's one of the things, one of the things that's listed as works of the flesh. That's that's practicing witchcraft, witchcraft. All right. Um, uh, what do you call them? The Oshun, okay, yeah. Ogun. Uh, what's what's the word for them? Orishas. Yes. I remember I started getting more into that and feeling a very deep attachment to um, uh, Oshun, especially. So when Beyonce came out with that song where she was wearing all yellow and really angry, I was like, "That's it. I, I'm with you, Beyonce." Why were you so attached to Oshun? Okay, so. Now, some of us may not. Some of us may not be familiar with um, Yeah, not everybody may not may be familiar with Beyonce's works or not everybody may listen to the music. So she made reference to Oshun. That's one of the guys that her uncle introduced her to. And uh, so when she heard it from Beyonce, which is again, Oshun is an African goddess of love and sweet waters. And here she's depicted in images wearing yellow. Okay. These are the pictures of the goddess Oshun. So when Beyonce did it, hold on. Let's see if we can capture some of it. I think you can see her there. Let's see if there's a better one because that one's like a really good photo of that. So we see her dressed up in uh, what appears to be the goddess of Oshun's images. And that's what she wore, I think, during the, the Grammy Awards. I think that was her Grammy Award performance. So, you know, for those that, um, you know, may say, 
you know, something like, you know, I don't understand why faith, the faith-based community is so against Beyonce. Well, when you do things like that, that's what turns the faith-based community against you. You know what I mean? When you're dressing up like an idol, that again, God said, thou shalt have no other gods before me. And you're dressing up as an idol and performing as the idol. And you're giving that deity energy. You don't think God, you know, let forget the people. Like your maker is offended. You know what I'm saying? Your, your maker is displeased. Forget the people, what the people are saying. Forget the blogs. Forget, you know what I mean? Forget, forget the, the podcasters, you know, if the social media influencers, what about what God is saying? You know what I mean? So no, God is, God is not pleased with that. That's not, that's not acceptable. Like at all, because if God said no other God says what he means, I'm sorry. I, you know, why are we mincing words? Why are we like, what, what, what are we doing here? What, 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 what are we doing? Like for real? You know what I mean? Let's just be honest now. We're not being honest. We're not being honest. This is unacceptable. This is not of the, this is not of God, you know? And I think sometimes, again, we compromise so much and we try to mince words and all this other stuff. But the truth of the matter is, is God said no other gods and that's what he meant, period. And this young lady said that she could relate because, again, this is something that her uncle was introducing her to. So the moment she seen Beyonce and she saw the yellow, she immediately recognized that she was serving the goddess Oshun. All right, let's continue. Um, so from my understanding, you couldn't just pick an Orisha. They kind of had to pick you. And when I was looking into it and I was just thinking like, well, I want the Orisha to come to me. I used to have dreams in line with the aspects that Oshun used to demonstrate. So I had a lot of twin imagery within my dreams, a lot of uh, two, two things. I don't know how else to explain it. Yeah. And also a lot of water. Yeah. And a water can sometimes be like Yamaya, but in the way that I saw it, it was a lot of gold, yellows within the water side. And that's how I just knew that, okay, I'm here. I'm, I'm on her side. Mm. It's very long, getting back to the idea that I was very angry at God. I started doing more TikToks now, TikTok lives even. And there would be people coming up in the comment section being like, oh, hey, I'm a witch, but I'm a good witch and I do good witchcraft. And this is the first time I kind of thought about the difference between good and bad witchcraft, right? Because I just thought from my Christian understanding, all witchcraft is bad. So, you know, I began to ask them more questions and I fell into the TikTok rabbit hole of just different rituals and different gods and different deities and just a surplus of knowledge that I fell into. And for the first time, it began to feel like maybe Christianity really just destroyed my whole understanding of the spiritual realm. I felt like I was walking into knowledge that had been hidden. I don't know if you've ever seen this, this picture, this drawing. It's very popular in like, um, alchemy spaces and stuff like that where it's like a person who lifts a veil and they see like a whole new world and it's this idea that when you get into knowledge when you get into the occult you get illuminated with all this new knowledge for example the idea of god the apple lucifer lucifer allowed you to have the apple because he wanted you to have knowledge and that's where i was drawn to so when i started doing more witchcraft now doing different spells um going let me pause for just a few minutes let me just take it back for just a little bit first she started out with african ancestry the worship of, of oshun um the information that was imparted to her by her uncle and her sharing on her social media platform i believe it was TikTok, information regarding african culture african spiritualism african religion and that sort of thing and her talking about that and then from her doing that we see the enemy again trying to come in the comment section now and just saying hey you know i'm a white witch you know i i do good witchcraft not bad witchcraft and now he again he's opening up other doors you know a lot of these things are gateways to other things you know the more information we get the more information that we want to know and and to obtain 
And so it was almost as if, again, she's on a journey. She's trying to find something, right? Something to fill the void that she had that only God can fill. But the enemy's trying to take her down this, like she said, the rabbit hole. He's trying to take her to a place where she gets so low that it'll be difficult to come out of that space. And ultimately he wants to kill. That's, you know, kill, steal, and destroy. And so he uses the bait of knowledge, just like he used the bait of knowledge with Eve. It wasn't that he wanted her to know or learn knowledge or to be informed or to, you know, be equipped um, because she's lacking information and, and he just wants to help her. No, he wanted her to sin. He wanted her to get out of fellowship with God, to become unprotected by God. He wanted her to suffer the consequences of her disobedience. He wanted to kill her because in doing so, remember God said that you should surely die. He wanted to kill her. So he was luring her to partake of that so that she could be destroyed. That was the reason why he did it. But when you don't understand that knowledge, see, the devil wants you to learn everything but God. Everything but God. He wants you to learn all the new age stuff, all the witchcraft, anything that's sensual, anything that's carnal in nature, anything that's demonic. He wants you to have access to that information. He want to give you a sneak peek. He wants you to see what's behind the veil. But when it comes to the things of God that will, I'm talking about show enough knowledge that will keep you safe, that will really empower you, that will give you the victory, that will cause you to live, live sin free, that will empower you to really begin to deal with him and his camp and, and have the victory over them and take authority over them. He don't want you to know that. <laughs> he don't want you to know that knowledge. Okay. He wants you to learn the stuff that will ultimately destroy you. To take you to, to the path that is the that will cause you to get farther and farther away from God. That broad path to destruction. That's where he's leading you down. That's the path. And God wants you to be on that narrow path to eternal life. So just to be clear, yeah, he's leading you somewhere. It's not the knowledge, it's the type of knowledge that he wants you to have access to. Because remember that tree is good and evil. He was more interested in you tapping into the evil because ultimately that's what's going to possess you. Because now you're, you're, you're not covered by God. Now you're no longer safe. Now he has, he has legal rights to you. So he wants you to tap into that evil side so that he can manipulate you and have his way in and through you. That's what he was interested in, you obtaining the evil. It wasn't knowledge in general. It was the evil part. That's what he wanted you to have access to, or us, or we. When I say her, meaning woman, because she's everybody, you know? she's She literally gave gave life to, gave um, us who we are today. She's, she's our mother, you know? Going into deep meditations, I started, reali I started realizing that maybe this is at the very extreme end maybe lucifer was right and god was wrong i went from being angry at god and wanting to like deny his existence to having experienced so much real things in the spiritual realm like spells uh, like casting spells like spirit guides so in your mind you kind of convince yourself that lucifer yeah, Lucifer. It's not meant to be. I don't like these people. <laughs> I'm just not, look. I'm wearing white. I just Amen. don't belong. Anyway, Lucifer. Okay, so in your mind, you've made up that you you kind of concluded that Lucifer is right and maybe God is wrong. What happens after that? Okay, I'm going to take you back a little bit. So I'd been working with uh, spirit guides. Mm -hmm. So. There was a day I went, I was still living with my mom and I went to her home and I felt again, this presence, something was around me. Something wanted to contact me. Okay, she's talking about spirit guides. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to speed this up. Let me just speed it up just a little bit so that we can, she, let me see how this works for us, okay? All right, let's see. And I don't know how to explain that feeling, but it's just, it even feels like paranoia, to be honest with you. And I go into the bedroom, I sit down, and something just tells me, um, automatic writing. And I don't know what that is, so I begin to Google it. And automatic writing is a form of divination. 
where you kind of turn off your mind and you just let yourself write. It's almost like you give your arm something else to begin to write. So now we have something else. We have her being introduced to what would be considered good witchcraft and then her drawing the conclusion that Satan was right, God was wrong. Again, there's that confusion, right? She drawing the conclusion because the enemy has convinced her that that is the case. Again, manipulating her into believing that God is wrong, he's right, you know, the good, this, this information that you're getting, tapping into, coming into the knowledge of is for your good, right? He's convinced her of that. So now she's like, okay, I'm going to pretend or act as if God does not exist because now she's starting to experiment, right, with witchcraft. Now she's being open to spirit guides, all right? Again, these unclean spirits that are leading and talking to her, just like the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost, you know, which is the spirit of God that is in us, that leads and guide us. The same thing with the, on the opposite side of the, the demonic realm, the, the, the darkness. They also have evil spirits that come to guide. Okay. So let's understand that spirit guides are not of God. Let's be clear. They're of the enemy. And she was saying that the spirit guide is what introduced her to another form of divination, which is the automatic writing. Okay. That's what she's being introduced to now. So I began to take a piece of paper and a pen and I just begin to write. And I'm, write, I'm writing so quick, like quicker than I've ever written before. It's like I wrote two pages within a minute. Mm. And I look at it and this, it's this whole message of, um, we are your spirit guys, there's four of us. We've been trying to contact you. We've been calling you since you were a child. Um, as you go on, we're going to begin to reveal ourselves to you so you can have a deep relationship with us. I look at the paper and I'm reading it because I didn't know what I wrote. That's the whole point, like you're detached. Yeah. And I'm thinking, I've definitely gone mad. Like I need to talk to my parents. I need to get actual help. This is going to get out of, out of hand. Then um, something just tells me, like, just, just, just do it again. Just do it again. And I begin to do it again. And I was like, if you don't believe that we're real, take a look at this stock, right? It was a specific stock. There was three letters in it. And it was like, watch it for the next two weeks. It's going to rise. As it rises, you're going to know that we're definitely real. I'm not into stocks. I don't know the name of any stocks. When I look at it, it is, it is a stock that's currently, that was being used, um, this technology, solar power thingy. And within the next two weeks, it actually rose. And that's when I was like, okay, I began to go back. And when I decided to go back, I started researching more things of divination. So this is when I started getting introduced to more tarot card readings. I started getting introduced to crystal balls, to candle flames. Um, okay, so again, they're trying to, these spirit guides, I think she said it was four of them. Um, they, you know, they wanted her to obviously yield so that she can become acquainted with them. And so, you know, she's listening and they're giving her a sign essentially okay well you know just to prove that this is real you know here's a stock it's going to rise okay and when it does that is your proof that what you're experiencing is real and so that happened so it just again checked off something off the box now she mentioned something else let me just go back just a little bit um this technology solar power thingy and within the next few weeks it actually rose and that's when I was like, okay, I began to go back. And when I decided to go back, I started researching more things of divination. So this is when I started getting introduced to more tarot card readings. I started getting introduced to crystal balls, to candle flames. All right. So we have more what she identifies to be divination. Tarot cards, um, crystal balls, uh, something about candles. Um, how you can read a candle flame and it can tell you what spirits are in the room, how they're talking. Candle flames. And ask questions. Candle magic, where you set an intention on a candle and then you light it. You let it burn out or you blow it. Mm -hmm. So one thing that definitely got me in and eased me in the, is I, the idea that so many people practice magic without knowing it. Honeybug keeps your... Hold on, y'all. Let me just... So, again, interesting. Because, again, she's going to essentially tell us what they try to tell her to try to, you know, again trick her into doing these things oh you've been you know many 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 of you all's been doing magic anyway and she's going to bring up the fact that um what we do culturally right a part of our culture which is when we celebrate birthdays for people that light candles and and make a wish blow them out that that's actually a form of, of magic and she was saying that people do it innocently they don't even know that they're practicing magic but no harm came to you 
you know, they're trying to play that game, right? No harm came to you. You've been practicing magic the whole time. It's a part of your culture. It's ingrained in your culture. Nothing happened to you. So, you know, so it's okay to do, right? It's, you know, a way to convince you that open yourself up. We, we, we're we good. You know, we, we want to help you. You know, again, all deception, all deception. Oops. You, can, you practice magic. Now I'm not going to say that's the balls to candle flames, um, how you can read a candle flame and it can tell you what spirits are in the room, how they're talking, you can ask questions. Candle magic, where you set an intention on a candle and then you light it, and you let it burn out or you blow it. Mm -hmm. So one thing that definitely got me in and eased me in is the idea that so many people practice magic without knowing it. So one thing that I hear a lot of witches say is, don't be afraid if you've ever blown out a birthday cake, mm -hmm. you practice magic. Now I'm not going to say that's real, that's not real, but I know that at the time I was like, I'm doing the same thing. I set an intention on a candle and I blow it out and that manifests itself, right? So now you're talking about like Lucifer and stuff. Mm -hmm. As I began to go into deeper meditations and I would go to a specific place um, where I'd see my spirit guys and they'd talk to me and they'd tell me things about people, about online. They'll tell me, okay, you're going to go make this video on TikTok. And that video would hit a million views. And like, all right. So now we have the spirit guides telling her to make videos. Um, she said something else to go into deeper meditations and I would go to a Medi specific. Okay. Meditation. All right. So again, just take note of all the different practices, right? All the things that she's doing that's driving her deeper and deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole. That's causing her to practice more divination and causing her to be open to these spirits and causing her to get closer to the enemy of her soul and farther and farther away from God all these different practices that she's mentioning. These are not innocent. ...place um, where I'd see my spirit guys and they'd talk to me and they'd tell me things about people, about online. They'll tell me, okay, you're gonna go make this video on TikTok. And that video would hit a million views in like three days, really quickly. Mm -hmm. um, they tell me to start talking about this topic, that topic. So I know that they were real. So some of the topics were libations. That's when I started talking about African spirituality mm -hmm. on my platform. Mm -hmm. um, I'd write poetry. Now this is a very big thing. I write poetry mm -hmm. and um, I am a poet, but at that time, I began to practice more mediumship because when I would write out a poem, I wasn't really thinking, okay, what do I want to say? I'd just be sitting there and I'd hear out a full poem and I just begin to write it out, just write it out. And then I'd perform it and it hit like 250,000 views. Wow, this is so touching. And I'd literally be so disconnected from the work because it's not mine. Like I just sat there and I received it and I gave it to you. Um, yeah, so as I was going into these like deeper meditations, they started introducing me to other deities. So in my meditations, I had a garden that they were in. There was four spirit guides. There was two men, a woman and, um, and a... How do I explain this? I would say like a black panther. It looked like a black panther, but it was just, it was like a big cat. Mm -hmm. And I know that that is connected to my grandmother because she, um, her totem is a, is a lion, right? And later on, when I get more into African spirituality, explaining that, I'll explain how that ended up coming back around. Like my grandmother's spirit always was around me, especially in that place. So my spirit guys started being swapped out. They started saying, okay, well, we've gotten this far with you. Some of us can't stay now. There's other people coming to teach you more, mm -hmm. to help you more in your journey. And as they left, these deities would come in, for example, the deity Lilith. So that's okay. when I first started understanding and researching more about her. Okay, so now she's saying that the spirit guides, quote unquote, would say, okay, we can we only could take you to this this far in terms of the education, the learning, or whatever. And so um, there's gonna be others that's gonna come that can take you further. So to me, right there, that's giving us some insight with regards to there being rank and order, even in the demonic realm, that she is within that, with on the path that she's on, she's on a journey and she's getting higher in terms of her rank in the demonic as a witch slash pagan, okay? And so as she's being introduced to all these different practices and she's learning more and she's like a sponge, she's a little like so, she's soaking all of this stuff up they're having to now um, introduce her to stronger, you know, spirits that can take her that are probably more skilled and have more, you know, information in other areas that the other previous spirits don't. And so that's, and, and that, to, you know, just like within the body of Christ, you know, there within the body, there's an expertise amongst the body. Um, you know, just like there's you know, apostles and prophets and, evangelists and pastors and teachers there are these levels within the demonic realm and so 
it is just interesting as she's again sharing her story and what she actually experienced is for you to take note and again if you if you experience the same then please by all means let let this expose the the tricks of the enemy let the, let this be a moment where you get that aha that epiphany that epiphany to know that this is not somewhere where you should be and something that you should be doing so that's what my prayers are that is that you will see the light and then walk therein see that this is you know the light that is being shown through the, the giving of her testimony and by us having conversation with the word of god is shining light on your situation so that you can come out of darkness into god's marvelous light and i think this is the point where my physical aesthetic really changed the way that i was talking to people really changed and i became more outwardly um, I would use the phrase sexually liberated because that's the phrase everybody else would use. Mm. But really, I became more in bondage to sexuality. Okay. Right. What was the, because I was watching a video the other day um, as I kind of was preparing for our conversation, and this one was saying, like, in order for you to actually. I'm sorry. She says she started changing after she was introduced to Lilith. Okay. So Lilith is another goddess or another deity that she was in, introduced to that caused her to be more promiscuous. Okay, cause her to be more promiscuous, and and she said, and therefore, oftentimes the world try to say, oh, you become freer, but but it's it's the opposite, you become in bondage, you become bound, right? You did. There's a stronghold that happens, so you're not you're not you can easily you can't easily get out of it. You can't easily stop because you are now in bondage actually become a witch there's like certain things that you need to do like it, it's kind of like you join the gang like you join the cult so there's expectations so what was the was that particular shift was that particular like moment thing that you had to do that was like okay i'm now a witch Continental. all right guys let's try to work through this but you will have phases of different initiations mm -hmm. if you want to join the coven for example that's a group of witches mm -hmm. um for me just before i got saved um this is where the lucifer part comes in I was going to give my first blood offering, which was my own blood, on an altar to make a covenant with Lucifer. Yeah, so it's crazy. Wow. Does that answer the question? Yeah, it does. <laughs> so she mentioned something about how do you know that you're really crossing into this, that you're now a part of this, or that you're a, a true practice or practitioner of this. And she was saying that there's different levels to it. Um, she mentioned of uh, being a part of a coven. I don't know when I came into the knowledge of like Wicca and stuff like that. I don't know exactly what year that was, but I came into the knowledge of that. And yes, there are covens um, in witchcraft, you know, and she's going to talk about her making a blood sacrifice. And that's pretty much how she um, became official, if you will but the sacrifice that she made was to Lucifer, you know? And again, people don't understand what they're fully doing. They don't, but what, but I will say this, that if you found yourself being like her and somehow gotten deceived into doing that, the Bible doesn't say that you cannot receive forgiveness. And I think that's another lie that is often told as well. The lie of, if you do happen to go that deep, right? If you happen to do that, there's no returning back. There's no turning back. God won't forgive you. All that's a lie. There's nothing in the Bible that says that if you do that, that you can't be forgiven. You know, there's only one thing that the Bible says that you cannot receive forgiveness for, and that's blaspheme of the Holy Ghost. That is the only thing that if you are alive and you are, um, cognizant and if you desire to to you know to do the right thing and and you are broken in your spirit and you have a contrite heart and you want to repent and you want to turn and you want god and you're sorry god will receive you he will forgive you he will wash you and cleanse you of all unrighteousness you see she has a testimony of coming out of it you can do the same but the enemy will will he will try to almost convince you that if you go as far as this, there's just no return. God is not going to receive you back again. Yes, you done, you done stepped over the line. There's no coming back from this. That's it. That's it. You're mine. You're mine. The devil is a liar. I'm telling you, the devil is a liar. There's nowhere, none, none of that's written in the Bible. It's not true. It's not true. So I'm glad that we're debunking that today. 
so that you know that if you did go that far and you you know that you did you you, you were wrong and you shouldn't have did that but you did it you can still be forgiven you can still be isn't that amazing you can still be forgiven you can still be washed and cleansed of all unrighteousness if you accept jesus christ as your personal savior today okay if you accept jesus if you confess him with your mouth and believe him with your heart i'm telling you you can and will be saved I'm telling you mm -mm -mm. jesus yeah so going back to kind of like working with lilith and stuff mm -hmm. and really i think what people think because in the scripture she's called a demon of the night mm -hmm. right but within people who call themselves like daughters of lilith like i consider myself a daughter of lilith it's an incredible it, the feelings are matched. Well, let me not say that because yeah. God's feelings are best. Yeah. But at that time, I was so broken by church hurt. I was broken by abuse from childhood, from feeling like I really didn't fit in. So coming to this place where you have this deity and you can feel like when her spirit enters a room, like these things are really real. Mm -hmm. You can feel it. And for me, it was this motherly vibe. And it's unfortunate that people that are targeted the most are the, the people that she indicated. Church hurt, abuse, all these things, rejection, um, these are the people that are the, that are targeted so then you have to ask the question why did i go through these things because the enemy wanted you to go through those things he facilitated those things so that you can feel the way that you feel so that you can be a prime target for his suggestions so that when he introduces this dark side you'll be willing to accept it because you won't be able to explain while you went through what you went through, but he got, but the Satan is going to pass the blame to God. So you can be mad at him so that you can be open to the enemy. All right. It's all deception. He's behind you getting hurt. You, your church hurt. He behind your trauma. He's behind all this stuff just so that he can position you, groom you to the dark side. So that when he, little by little, bit by bit, as you can see, as she's been sharing her journey, little by, he's introducing dark over here, darkness over here, taking her deeper down here, introducing this over here, this concept over here, taking her deep down here, deep down here. Now, okay, now she feels a sense of belonging. Now she feels protected. Now she feels like, okay, I think I found what I was looking for. Deception. Deception, of course. Of course, he's, he's going to allow her to feel that way until he's ready to flip the script and believe it or <laughs> it's coming the the, the 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 script will be flipped because he's, he can only be benevolent for only so long because that's not that's not his true intention that's not who he really is the bible says that he will appear as an angel of light but he's not an angel of light he's he's a dark he's a dark angel now he was one but he ain't no more so he can only he can only pretend for so long. His true colors are going to come out. His true intentions are going to come forward. And just this idea of even when you read uh, things about her or, or have meditations with her dwelling on and contemplating and having her speak to you when you do offerings of candles or whatever it is that you're doing. And just this feeling of protection that I really didn't feel before. I didn't feel protected by my family. Mm. I didn't feel protected by my church. Mm. So when you're worshiping these idols and these demons, you f they, they are very vengeance ready. You know how the Bible says that God vengeance his mind as God? For them, they're like, don't let anyone treat you like that. You can you can do a sacrifice for me right now and we can deal with them. You can you can handle that situation. And it's just this liberating feeling that I can't get hurt anymore. Yeah. Nobody can hurt me. I'm not that little child anymore. Unprotected. Unprotected. Yeah. Um, and for me, because I'd been sexually abused and I'd been sexually abused by a woman, which is the reason that my sexuality was so messed up and my perspective on myself was so messed up, I started falling deeply and more freely into my same-sex attraction and just being in those meditations with her saying like, there's nothing wrong with you. Like, you don't have to hide that. You can be yourself. In fact, Lilith was saying this. Yes. Okay. In fact, where they made you feel like your sexuality was wrong and took it from you, you go give it to everyone guilty. And that's when I was so free, like sexually. Mm -hmm. I want you. Come. I want you. Come. You don't want me? Let me light a candle real quick. I'll see you. Did you ever do that? So she's just talking about the candle lighting and what she did to try to manipulate people's will using the candles um, and also how serving Lilith made her feel even more comfortable with the sexuality and their struggle with her sexuality and the conflicting with, within her sexuality. And I guess that spirit was encouraging her or giving her, empowering her to feel more comfortable um, with the same sex attraction. But again, all of these things that she's sharing with us all these things are, again, the enemy's trick 
but try to get her deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into sin and farther and farther away from her true savior, from, from her true love and protector, which is God the Father. Okay. And so, of course, what feels natural, that's what you're that's what they're going to, these spirits are going to try to um entice you to tap into what feels natural, that carnal nature to feed, because all of the things that she mentioned is all connected to our carnality. All the things that she's mentioned is connected to that. So feed that, feed that. You feel that, feed it. You, 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 you feel you know, you feel attracted to this, then give into it. Do again, that's actually a form of worship as well. Um, I think she's gonna mention the name of it, but let me find it real quick. It's a form of worship, is worshiping yourself. It's it's but it's is it alchemy or hold on, let me just look it up real quick. There's a word for it. There's another word for it. I can't find it. But there is a word for self-worship. If it comes to me, I'll be sure to share it. But there's a there actually is a word for it. You can't find it right now. But there is an actual word for it. Excuse me. All right, so let us let let's continue. Uh, there was one situation where there was this guy, um, and I don't know what he said to me, but he, he really pissed me off. Mm. Like, he really made me quite upset. And I knew my power. And I knew what I could do because I've, I'd, I know that even when I said things, it would come to pass in somebody's life, mm. right? So I was like, okay, I'm going to deal with the situation. I'm going to do a little spell. And in the spell ritual thing that I was doing, you'd light something up and let it completely burn. And when it finishes burning, it's done. When I burnt it, when I started burning it, and it's paper, there was something written on a paper with different spices and herbs on it to really give it that razzle-dazzle. <laughs> Bro, that was insane. <laughs> what? When I lit it now, it lit for like two seconds. It lit for like two seconds, like this much. And if you know anything about lighting paper, mm -hmm. like it lights, it stopped lighting immediately. And I heard one of my spirit guys whisper to my right ear, "Don't do that again." And I was like, "Chris, we've well, never told me that." So, and I was very hard-headed, stubborn. It's like I'm gonna finish. I'm gonna finish this guy. He cannot treat me like this. I began to light it again, and it lit halfway through, and it stopped. And I heard his mother's praying for him. You cannot do that to him. That's when I, I let that paper go and I walked in. And that's when I started thinking, something's wrong. Like, mm. I, like, we are the most powerful. Like, what do you mean? Exactly. Why are you saying his mother's praying for him? Because he was like, forgive me, I'm a Christian now, but at the time I called him a scumbag, mm. right? Like, he doesn't deserve any of his protection. Mm -hmm. And even though he professes Christianity, what's he doing over here with me? Mm. You know what I mean? In yeah. that time where, you know, Lilith has said to you, his mother's praying for him, and knowing what you know and coming from like, a Christian background, was that, did you have a moment where you're thinking, how does that prayer have more power than what yeah. we're supposed to have? Yeah, but, but, um, my heart was already turned against God. Mm -hmm. So you know when the Bible says their hearts are hardened, so even if God shows them his power, they won't yeah. listen. So even though I saw, like I'd been trumped immediately, mm. twice, I was still like... I didn't even want to think about it, because it was irritating me. It wasn't even like, oh, I did something bad. Because he was like... Because I'm a Christian now, but at the time I called him a scumbag, mm. right? Like, he doesn't deserve anybody's protection. Mm -hmm. And even though he professed Christianity, what's he doing over here with me? Mm. You know what I mean? In yeah. that time where, you know, Lilith has said to you, his mother's praying for him, and knowing what you know and coming from like a Christian background, was that, did you have a memory where you were thinking, how does that prayer have more power than what yeah. we're supposed to have? Yeah, but, but um, my heart was already turned against God. Mm -hmm. So you know when the Bible says their hearts are hardened, so even if God shows them his power, they won't yeah. listen. All right, so we'll we'll pause there. So basically, <clears throat> she was using the candle um, magic or what have you to get what she wants. 
um, I guess if she wanted somebody physically or wanted to be in a relationship with someone or whatever, if they weren't willing to do it, she would again try to use the candle magic to go against their will. Um, but in the example that she gave, which was kind of cut off or whatever, but the example was, I guess she wanted someone that didn't want her and she tried to use the candle magic and it wouldn't work. And so the spirit guides told her to stop. And she, in that moment, did not understand as to why she had to stop. Because remember, they told her, if you want something, you do this, we'll get, we'll protect you, we'll give this, we'll do this, basically, we'll, we'll serve you. But now, all of a sudden, she's noticing that, you know, there's levels to this. Like, she can't just do what she wants to do, and, and she's not really understanding why. But just in a nutshell, obviously, this person, and I think she may have mentioned it, and we got cut off because of a commercial again, fair use, fair use, fair use, that um, that person was a believer, even though that person wasn't probably the best person in the world. But I believe he had a praying mother or he had a, another praying family member that kept him covered in prayer. And because of those prayers, she was not able to perform magic or the magic that she tried to perform um, on him was not successful. That's that weapon formed against us won't prosper. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, you know, she basically confirmed that, you know, even in her walk, um, that, you know, it showed that witchcraft, that, that the power of witchcraft is no power against the people of God, that that power is, it's not, it's no match for the power of the most high God. Satan's power is no match to the power of the most high God. But at the time, like she said, she was so blinded and her heart was so hard, hard that she couldn't see it, that she couldn't comprehend it at the time. But that was a moment, I believe that it was a mental note, if, if nothing else, that she now thinks back on and remembers like, wow, you know, it's like the devil low key told me, <laughs> like our, ma our magic is no match for the, for the, for the power of prayer. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> Our power is no match to the power of God, so leave them alone. You know, that you, when you stir up the stuff, we get trouble. You know what I'm saying? So interesting, right? Interesting. So this is the end of part two. We're going to end it here. I really, really, really do appreciate you for rocking with me with this particular series, like a series, and we are not near done, y'all. So this is part two. We will do part three as soon as possible. So please do not forget to like this video, make a comment. What do you say? Are you... Are you intrigued? Like, is this helping you? What's going on? Please go ahead and make a comment and subscribe to the channel. That's all that I got today. Thank you again so much for tuning in. Until next time, God bless you and keep you safe from harm. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Bye.